what's up guys welcome back and in this video i'd like to test our application so our app is fairly simple and it's just making use of an api so we'll take a look at testing our api and faking responses so right now the way i look at it our app only has two features you can view this page here with an index of movies and you can view a single movie page with movie details so let's go ahead and write our feature tests to match those two features. So let's go into our code and let's make use of the default test here in tests feature. And I'm going to rename this to, let's rename it to view movies test, view movies test. And let's go ahead and change this view movies test. Okay. And I like to use snake case with an annotation and I have a snippet for that. And let's call this test the main page shows correct info. So let's go ahead and make a response variable here and let's hit this route. I like to use my name routes in here. So movies.index. Okay. And let's just see if our response is successful. So assert successful or you can do assert status 200 or assert okay as well so this will pass hopefully let's see if it passes okay and it does and let's just make a few more assertions here so let's assert that we see popular movies and i'm okay with that for now so let's just say response assert C or assert C text. It's up to you. Popular movies. And again, this should pass because that should be in the response. Okay. The problem with this is that we are hitting our API endpoints. And in general, when you're testing, you don't want to hit external services, whether that's an API or sending out mail or something like that. So to prove to you that we're hitting the API, let's go ahead and go into our movies controller. And right here, I am just going to die and dump the popular movies. Okay. And I am just going to die and dump the JSON without the results key here. And I'll put that back later. And if I hit this again, this is the response from the API. So it has all the movie information from the TMDB API. So like I said, we don't want to hit that endpoint in our tests. So what we can do is fake it. So Laravel has a bunch of handy fakes for many different features, such as mailables, queues, events, notifications, and for the HTTP client as well. So if you go into the documentation and go to faking responses, you'll see how to do that. So if we do HTTP fake before our test, then we can specify our own fake responses. So let me show you that back to our test. And if we do this at the top or anywhere before we hit or make a response, then you'll see that now if I run this, I get an error. I have to import. Okay. And let's try it again. And now you see it's null because we're faking it. So if you look at the docs, we can actually fake specific URLs right here and we can provide our own response. So what we want to do is basically take the response or a similar response to what we get from the real API and fake it in our own application. So let me show you what I mean. Back to our app. Let me take this out for a second and let's run this again. So what I want to do is specify this entire array. I don't know if it goes that far up. Okay, it does. So I'm going to copy all of this. Is that the right thing? Okay. And what we want to do is mimic that response in here in our own application. So let's do that. So let's put the, the fake back and we want to specify our own responses in here. So in the controller, we're hitting three endpoints here and we want to hit those three endpoints in here as well. 
Um, by hit, I mean fake. So let's put the exact URL here that we want to fake. So api.themoviedb.org slash three slash movie slash popular. So that's the first one. And the response goes in here or our fake response. So if we look at the docs, it's going to be HTTP response. Okay, so let's do that. HTTP response. And then the first argument is the fake response. So the thing I copied should go in here. And the second argument is the HTTP status. So that thing I copied should go in here. And this is a huge array. And obviously this is not exactly a PHP array. So you're gonna have to spend the time to make this a real PHP array. And you can change the data if you want. So I'll do that behind the scenes because this is a really cumbersome process. So if that wasn't entirely clear, you'll see now that I have a response here and I have a key of results and a value of foo. And you should see that in here when I run my test. There we go. So here is the fake response we have here. And as you can see, I only have one result here and I named the movie fake movie. So now we can assert that we see this fake movie in our fake response. So we want to do this for the other two endpoints that we're hitting too. So for these two, and this can get quite messy. So what I'm going to do is extract them to methods. So we'll return this response in a method. So let me just copy this and we can just cut it and we'll make a method here called fake popular movies. And then we'll do two more here for the other two endpoints. So let me just comment that out. We'll put a method in here. And I called it fake popular movies. And it takes no params, make it private. And let's paste that in. Actually, let's return and then we can paste that in. So I'm going to do the same for the other two endpoints. Just repeat the same process. And if you want, you can inspect the real response here by just dying and dumping and then you can just copy that and fake the array. Okay, so now I have my fake now playing movies and my fake genres as well. And for my fake now playing movies, the movie title here is now playing fake movie. And like I said earlier, the fake popular movies, the only movie I have in there is called fake movie. So now we can assert that we see that text in the response from our fake responses here. So let me just put this back to what it was before. And now if I did everything correctly, this should work. So fake movie is the fake movie we have in our popular movies. And for the genres, this is exactly what's coming back from the API. So let's just grab one from our actual app here and let's assert that we see it. So let's grab this one. Actually, no, what am I talking about? We have to see what the genres are for this one. So I have these 12, 18 and so on and so forth. So we have to match these genres with the actual genres. And I believe I do have that. So I'm just going to paste that in. So those are the five genres corresponding to those genre IDs. Actually, I'm going to leave that one out for now. And let's do the now playing movies as well. Okay, so this should be now playing. And this is called now playing fake movie, like I showed you a second ago. Okay. So now if I did everything correctly, let's run the test. And we have an error. Semicolon. Okay, so now our test is working. And you can see it's much faster because we're faking the responses instead of hitting the actual API. So let's fix that genres. Let's see if this, this is probably going to fail. And let's see why. Okay. So I can't find this 
and I'll show you why. So if you go into our actual app and if you inspect this in DevTools, and if you just open that up, you'll see that it's rendering the white space here and we're inspecting the response and not the rendered text in the browser. So we have to format this so there's no white space. So to me, that feels a little brittle. Uh, let's go to our movie card and let me show you what I mean. So we have to format this so that there's no line breaks and no white space. And like I said, that seems a bit brittle to me. I don't want to have to format this in a way just so that I can make the tests pass, but that's the only way I know how to do it for now. So let's try to get it passing. So we want no spaces here. And this is a wrapping line. It's on the same line, just my editor wraps. And let's see if this gets rid of the white space. So let's refresh this, inspect this. Okay, uh, there's still some white space here. And it looks like there's two spaces in between commas. So we have to put th that div here. So yeah, I just got rid of the space before the at end if, and now there's only one space. So now this should pass and it does. Awesome. So yeah, that seems brittle to me. If you have a better solution, please let me know. Okay. So now let's write our test for the other feature, which is just a single movie here. So pretty much the same thing. Let's go back to our test and let's make another one down here. Let's call it, oops, the movie page shows the correct info. And I'm not going to make you watch me do this. I'll just talk through it. So we're faking that endpoint that we're hitting. And I have a star here for our wildcard because if I go down here to show, I want it to match any ID here. And just like earlier, I have this fake response for the single movie, which I am going to paste in right here. So the name of that fake movie is, what is it? Fake Jumanji, I think. Yeah, so right here, fake Jumanji. So that's what we're gonna assert against. And these are in the fake response as well. So if I did everything correctly, this test should pass as well. And it does, cool. And if you wanna run our whole test suite, we can do PHP unit. And it runs really quickly because there's only two tests. One of the default ones in there too. So let's get rid of that. This one creates application. Yeah, let's get rid of this. Sorry, not creates application. There's a unit test in here too. So I guess we'll just leave that in there. Or in PHP, not PHP, in Laravel 7, there's a new PHP artisan test command, which has nicer output if you want to do that. Awesome. So we successfully tested our application. Specifically, we faked our API responses and made assertions against our fake responses. Please like, comment, and subscribe if you haven't already done so. Thanks for watching, guys. See you in the next one. Okay, thanks. Bye.